And then just thinking about just this increased risk of infection and just immunocompromisation, I'm sure that people have tons of um, comorbidities at times, especially, you know, at a certain age, right? What are some comorbidities that you see most often? And I'm wondering how some of those treatments might overlap or interact with um, the treatment regimen that you would um, recommend. Yeah. And I think that's the, the reason why we decide or how we decide to use one quadruplet versus another quadruplet or one treatment versus the, the other. We look at the, the patient, their age, their comorbidities. And so when you think about, you know, the, the average population of patients being diagnosed with multiple myeloma, you know, 60 and, and, and older. And we look at all the medical comorbidities that are affecting, you know, the 60 and older population. It's it's not just, you know, the cancers, it's the obesity, it's the heart failure, it's the diabetes. You have to decide on which regimen you're going to use as you're taking care of these patients. Um, so, you know, in communities, you know, people were using these uh, triplet, uh, multiple myeloma regimens. But even back in the day, in my training, we used to use doublets. It was just your standard, you know, Velcade dexamethasone for those patients who had really poor uh, performance status. And so now things are changing where mostly all patients should be getting a quadruplet um, therapy because we have seen such a sustained response. What is what is different, I would say, is that those patients who are younger, more robust, those six year olds, based off of the advanced trial, for instance, where we're looking at um, DARA uh, and KRD, those are the patients that I'm probably going to give that, you know, to versus giving them DARA, DARA um, Velcade, Dex, and Methazone. Um, those patients who are a little bit more fit, who, who don't have as much heart failure, or those medical comorbidities, I'm leaning to using that as a, uh, a quadruplet therapy. Mm. Um, and then, um, in your experience, how do things like home administered treatments and telemedicine, for example, change the quality of life for myeloma patients or even the effectiveness of treatment? So what I would say is that home administration, we're not doing too much of, of that as of yet. What I can say is what changed things or a game changer for me is when daratumumab became a subcutaneous injection versus uh, IV administration. And so we are seeing you know, less toxicity. So we are seeing uh, ease to administration, less uh, time in the chair. Um, I think it's making patients' life a little bit more easier. Um, and so I I could see in 20, 30, 30 years from now that there'll be more treatments um, that may be administered at home uh, where you're, you're not really worrying about all the side effects. I think sometimes, you know, even with the bispecifics or in the CAR-T, at, at this present moment, there is no way to to administer that at home. These are the things that the patients have to be hospitalized and making sure that they're not having all of these cytokine, cytokine um, issues. 